Good morning, and uh, happy Thanksgiving. This, I think, is my favorite, by far, season of the year. And I'll explain why in a little bit here. Uh, here's a picture on the cover of a painting of the first Thanksgiving at Plymouth. And um, whether it's accurate or not, the artist is trying to show all the people coming together and giving thanks. Uh, William Blake says the thankful receiver bears a plentiful harvest. Now you have your part today. Uh, anything that's bolded, um, you will say together. And uh, it's going to be a phrase said over and over and over again. Well, I invite you to have a word of prayer with me. Dear God, we thank you for this day. We thank you that if we look around, we have many things to be thankful for. If we just simply look away from ourselves, we will be surprised by the joy, the love, and the peace that you have for us every day and in all circumstances. Give us eyes that see you in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. Give thanks to the God of gods. His love endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord of lords. His love endures forever. Every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of the heavenly lights, who does not change like shifting shadows. He chose to give us birth through the word of truth, that we might be a kind of first fruits of all he created. And as we continue reading in the book of James, we will see the importance of being thankful in all circumstances. I invite you to sing a psalm of, uh, song of thanks, come thou fount of every blessing. Come the fount of every blessing, to my heart to sing thy grace. Streams of mercy never ceasing, call for songs of loudest praise. Teach me some melodious sonnet, sung by flaming tongues above. Praise his name, I'm fixed upon it. Name of God's redeeming love. This my glad commemoration, that till now I've safely come. And I hope by thy good pleasure, safely to a private home. Jesus sought me when a stranger, wandering from the throne of God. Here's my heart, Lord, take and seal it, seal it for thy votes above. And we continue this psalm of thanksgiving from Psalm 136. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. And now the women. His love endures forever, Abab and I, <laughs> who by his understanding made the heavens. His love endures forever. His love endures forever. Who made the great lights? His love endures forever. His love endures forever the moon and stars to govern the night. His love endures forever. And there's a wonderful Thanksgiving hymn, Now Thank We All Our God. <clears throat> Our 
Continue from Psalm 136. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. He remembered us in our low estate. His love endures forever. And freed us from our enemies. His love endures forever. He gives food to every creature. His love endures forever. Give thanks to the God of heaven. His love endures forever. And then an outlandish statement in the book of James. Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds. Isn't that an outlandish statement, right? Because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Let perseverance finish its work, so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking in anything. And so I have learned in my life, especially from the example of my father, uh, about knowing that God is good in all circumstances of life. And um, you know how it is when something bad happens, what are we, what's our first response? And I'm guilty of it too. Why me, Lord? What's this all about? And then we go through all sorts of things, and sometimes we say, well, maybe this was for some purpose. And we try to find that purpose. Sometimes uh, we don't find that purpose. Uh, but sometimes we do. And I found that purpose in my two extreme experiences in life. When I was in my 20s, I've shared this story before, uh, I had a bad uh, asthmatic reaction and there I was, dead on the floor at my mom's house out in the country. And it uh, took the paramedics forever to get out there. But the paramedics then revived me. They, they got my heart started again, they got me breathing. That was a frightening time rushed me to the hospital, and there in the hospital with all the meds and the treatments, they were able to reverse the situation, and that evening, they sent me home. Ah. <laughs> but I didn't go home the same person. I went home as if, engraved in my mind, I could see it clearly every day, 
a purpose for my life. You are here to serve. You are here to serve. And I've lived that way every day of my life. So that awful situation that I went through, I don't want to ever go through that again. God intended to use that to get my attention, I think. I must have a very thick skull. <laughs> and <laughs> and uh, it's a beautiful thing. I, I'm at my greatest joy whenever I'm serving or helping somebody. That could be here serving you, which is a truly a joy. Or it may be a neighbor digging the foundation for a new building. Uh, any way I can serve, like even today, I'm going to serve by helping a friend move. So I'll be moving furniture here and there. And that's where I just uh, feel like that's who I am more than anything else. Oh yes, that's, that's, yeah. Uh, serving is just being, being there for people too. <laughs> no. Yeah. Being kind, and that's part of a servant's heart. Yeah. Uh, then the other, uh, the other time, a uh, few years ago, not that many years ago, I had that heart attack. Ooh, boy. And um, uh, there in the hospital, you know, they fixed me up and. It's time to go, and uh, the doctor comes into my room, and as I've mentioned before, I thought he was going to make a list of do's and don'ts, of don't, don't do this, but do this to have a healthy heart. He said, I have only one word of advice. He said, every morning when you wake up, think of three things to be thankful for. It's good for your heart. And it's true. There is a whole science about gratitude and how it's good for your mental health, for your physical health, also for the health of society as well. You can have your part in healing society by starting your day with thankfulness. And I'm, I believe, you know, I had that heart attack, I don't want to have another one, I don't want to go through that again. But I think God intended that to get through my thick skull again. <laughs> uh, and um, to encourage others to live a life of thankfulness. And wherever I'm at, I want to develop a culture of thankfulness. That's why I mention it so much in um, each chapel we have. Uh, we enter God's presence with thanksgiving in our hearts. And uh, as I say, week after week, that's my favorite thing to hear from you. What are you thankful for? Even if it's the same thing. And uh, so, it's a beautiful thing. Because when you start your day with thanks, you're looking to God. And you have a greater propensity to keep looking for God throughout your day and see the joy that's always around you. So, what I'd like you to do now is take these sticky notes, and there should be, I think there's five of them in each of them, you can pull them apart, and while I play a couple of Thanksgiving hymns, uh, jot down a word or two, doesn't have to be long, um, about what you're thankful for. Think of five things to be thankful for. Thank you. 
Have you written some things to be thankful down for? Very good. So uh, I would like to collect those now. And as I collect them, uh, I, is it okay that I read them out loud to you all? Uh, if there's any names, I won't include that. Oh, I love that idea. You read it and then I'll read it back, okay? So what do you have to be thankful for? Love of God. Love of the world. Great kids. Mom and dad. And a wonderful husband. And family. Beautiful. And I'll take those and I'll post them on the window. That's okay. Okay. All right. Who else has something you could? Love Jesus, know Jesus. Six wonderful children. Twenty-seven great grandchildren. Friends in your house. Beautiful, beautiful. And I'll post these. Good. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, that's quite all right. Don't worry about it. <laughs> A roof over your head, yes. My friends, family, children's family, yeah. Oh, good. Oh, God's calling you to love and serve senior dogs in their final years, and you're doing a beautiful job of that. Yeah. That's a beautiful thing. May I take that and post them? Great. Okay. And Bob, how about you? You love God? Friends and family. Friends and family? Meals. Meals. Okay, yes, yes. yes. <laughs> Sleep. Sleep? Oh, yeah. man. And exercise. And exercise. Many things to be thankful for. Yeah. Well, I love it. Friends and family. Friends and family. Yep. All right, I'll post these. I have God. God. Nature, yes. Family. Family. And friends. And friends. Beautiful. Yeah, three of them. And Lorraine? Okay. 
good health, getting together with people, sunshine, God's blessings, and forgiveness. Oh, yes. Beautiful. Thank you. Yeah, uh-huh. Health. Health. Family, friends. Sunshine for light, warmth, and growth. Yes. God's never ending love, grace, and mercy. In Jesus' obedient words and sacrifice and example. Okay. All right. Um, all right. Uh, Say, would you be willing to just randomly post these on and we'll. Uh, I think you just lift from the bottom, and great. Okay, thank you. Oh, I have a program for you right here. And we've just given our word of thanks, so now we're on the Lord's Prayer. Okay. <clears throat> well, we can be thankful for the Lord's Prayer, because reminds us that we are forgiven and that we have uh, the opportunity and the really the command to forgive one another. Let's pray the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And from Thessalonians, rejoice always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is what God's will for you in Christ Jesus. And it is important that in all circumstances we give thanks to God because God is not going to waste the experiences in our life. I remember there was a time in my life uh, that uh, the finances were terribly, terribly tight. And uh, it was around Christmas time and my wife and I got the kids together to let them know that it wouldn't, I mean, we couldn't get all the gadgets and toys that they were hoping for that year. And uh, we were in a difficult situation financially. That happens in life. And um, so my daughter, who was about 15 at the time, and you know girls at that age, you all were that way. Not you, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, you compare yourself. We all compare ourselves to the friends who are around. You know, and, they have all, all the gadgets and electronics and everything, but we couldn't do it that year. And my daughter at 15, she says, what's the big deal? This is just a new life experience. And then she continued by saying, and God doesn't waste life experiences. And because of that financial downward spiral of our uh, life then, do you know what it did for the good? It brought our family together. And we believe that our kids are who they are today because they went through that with us. They, uh, they found different ways to entertain themselves, and that included just being together more. Uh, and it was a wonderful time. And to hear my daughter say that God does not waste life experiences. So truly, give thanks to God in all things. Well, I hope so. <laughs> I hope so. Mm -hmm. Well, we have a uh, continuing from Psalm 136. Oh, before we do that, let's have more time of prayer, actually. Um, uh, who in your life could we pray for today? Is there anyone? Your son. Oh, 
Ok Okay, let's pray for your son, okay? Dear Lord, we lift up this man who is struggling with, um, who has struggled with alcohol, that it will, uh, that he will be able to be free from alcoholism for the rest of his life, and uh, guide him through these days. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Your youngest brother fighting leukemia. Dear Lord, we lift up this man who's been fighting leukemia as well. We pray for your healing touch to be upon him. We pray for wisdom for the medical staff and the doctors and even those who are researching the disease that discoveries will be made that he will be restored. Amen. Okay. We pray, we pray for your brother. brother. Yeah. Yeah. Dear Lord, we pray for this other man who is going through chemo. Again, uh, we pray that his body will receive the treatment well, that he will be able to endure the treatment and persevere through it. And we pray for science and the medical staff to uh, treat him uh, in a wonderful new way, that he will be restored. Amen. Oh, beautiful, beautiful. I'll pray that. And Lord, we pray that all of us will have uh, a greater understanding of your work in our life and that we will have a, a, a greater uh, desire to forgive one another. And I know that will help us live in peace. Amen. <laughs> I didn't know that. Oh, I'm sorry your dog passed away. Okay. Oh. You're getting a new dog at Thanksgiving. And you know, um, I, I admire that you are called to help these older dogs. It's difficult to see them go. I, I, I can still see your dog's face. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> beautiful. <laughs> well, let's give thanks for this new dog. Dear Lord, we thank you that there will be a new dog in her life. And that um, uh, I ask that you comfort her through the loss of her other dog. And we thank you for her heart as she brings these dogs uh, a new chapter in their lives. Amen. Many things to be thankful for. And so now let's read from Psalm 136. Give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His love endures forever. Give thanks to the God of gods. His love endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord of lords. His love endures forever. Blessed are those who persevere under trial, because they have stood the test. They will receive the crown of life that God has promised to those who love him. When I read that, I'm reminded of the story of Joseph. And there have been many times as I'm reading through the story of Joseph and his brothers, how terrible they treated him. And when I get to the end, to that, that wonderful ending, I'm in tears already. We know the story of Joseph, how... Uh, Jealous, jealousy took over with all his brothers, and they tried to pretend to have their own brother killed. And they sold him into slavery, thinking, problem solved, he's out of our lives. But God had other plans. But it took Joseph, oh, probably 20 years of slavery and imprisonment, actually, uh, to be restored. A long time. Joseph endured. He had hope. He endured because of his hope in God. And he was, as we know the story, he became 
probably the second most powerful person on the planet at that time. Second only to Pharaoh, and he was in charge of really saving the world from uh, starvation. And here his brothers come looking for food, and he's there to distribute it. They didn't recognize him at first. <clears throat> and Joseph reveals himself to his brothers. And his brothers were quite frightened. They thought, oh my, the brother we thought we killed, he's now has the power to kill us. <laughs> And Joseph says, no, don't worry, don't worry. He says something powerful. He says, what you intended for evil, God intended for good. And when I get to that part of the story, sometimes I'm crying already. Um, because God is at work in our lives in everything. We can always give thanks, even in those dark days. I invite you to sing a closing song with me, Give Thanks with a Grateful Heart. It's a message in and of itself, and I love this. So take this home, read it through throughout the week. Um, it's part of your devotion. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the broad expanse of God's love and the abundance of his riches and glory shape your perspective on your own life and needs, including those things which disappoint you. May the eyes of your heart be open to all of the blessings which surround you. May this awareness produce a harvest of generosity in your spirit. May thankfulness rise up within you, not just during this short season, but day after day. From the early morning, watch until you retire for the night. May your prayers reflect gratitude while also acknowledging the needs of others whose situations are so drastically different. May thoughts of Jesus fill your mind and hunger for God drive your soul and love for the Lord guide your speech and your actions. And finally, may the grace, peace, and love of the triune God protect, defend, and an empower you to run with perseverance, the race marked out for you. With boldness we pray all these things because we know his love endures forever. Amen. Thank you everyone for coming out. And thank you Fred, good to see you. glad you're with us. <laughs>